This Week at NASA. July 11th is the new targeted launch date for Space Shuttle Endeavour on the STS-127 mission to the International Space Station. By then, NASA managers hope to know what caused the leak in the shuttle's excess hydrogen venting system that twice delayed Endeavour's launch. We'll go work this problem, and once we get it fixed and we're, we're, we're confident that we have a solution that's, that's going to work and allow us to go fly safely, then we'll proceed forward. No one will be happier to proceed than first-time flyer Chris Cassidy. The York, Maine native and U.S. Navy SEAL sees this mission as the next step in NASA's ultimate return to regions first explored by the Apollo astronauts 40 years ago. I think I'm uh, in a fortunate position as a, as a new astronaut to be part of a shuttle crew now and maybe a space station crew in my mate career and, and at the tail end of my career, hopefully, uh, um, uh, an exploration mission to the to the moon so it's very exciting for me personally two one main engine ignition and liftoff of the atlas V rocket with lro elcross america's first step of a lasting return to the moon on their way to the moon now are the lunar reconnaissance orbiter lro and its travel partner the lunar crater observation and sensing satellite elcross there, in about three to four months, the spent Centaur upper stage rocket about the size of a small bus will crash into a permanently shadowed polar crater. Elcross will then fly into the resultant plume of dust to measure mineral content and possible evidence of water ice before it, too, collides with the lunar surface. In the late 90s, two different missions around the moon actually found that there may be water ice present on the moon needs to be confirmed, and so the LCROSS mission is all about confirming if indeed there is water ice there. Meanwhile, LRO's multi-year orbiting mission will give NASA the tools to identify lunar landing sites and potential resources, measure radiation, and try out new technology. Hey, I'm Mike Bibbo. And I'm Kevin Krigswold, and we're the producers of NASA 360. Producers Michael Bibbo and Kevin Krigswold savored their Emmy win at the 51st annual Capital Region Emmy Awards. So here it is, the Wright Speed X1. NASA Television's NASA 360 is a half hour series that looks at how technologies developed by NASA impact the lives of everyday people. It's also available on the web at www.nasa.gov. Bibbo and Krigsvold, who write, edit, and produce the show for the National Institute of Aerospace in partnership with NASA's Langley Research Center, took home the Emmy for editing in a non-news televised program. Oh my God, are you kidding me? The winning segment, shot in part by award-winning Langley videographer Gary Banziger, tells the story of an all-electric race car, the Wright Speed X1. The executive producer of NASA 360 is Mike Finnery. NASA 360! 100 full-time undergraduate students have been selected by NASA to receive a one-year college scholarship. The agency's Motivating Undergraduates in Science and Technology, or MUST project, awards scholarships and internships to students pursuing degrees in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the STEM field. The average GPA for the students that we selected for this cohort is about a 3.85. And that's, that's very good for those hard sciences. So we think that we are getting the best and the brightest students involved in this project. Among the 39 colleges and universities represented by Musk scholarship recipients is Brown, Caltech, Georgia Tech, Harvard, Florida A&M, MIT, Maryland, Tuskegee, Fisk, and Texas. Managed at the Glenn Research Center, MUST is administered by the Hispanic College Fund, the United Negro College Fund, and the Society for Hispanic Professional Engineers. Two, one, engine start, ignition, and liftoff of a Delta II rocket with the Fuse spacecraft to explore the origins of the universe. Ten years ago, on June 24, 1999, the far ultraviolet spectroscopic explorer, or FUSE, launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, en route to study primordial chemical relics of the Big Bang, a process from which all stars, planets, and life evolved. 
using high-resolution spectroscopy in the far ultraviolet spectral region, FUSE explored the universe for eight years. Astronomers from all over the world used the Astrophysics Satellite Telescope to observe nearly 3,000 different astronomical objects. FUSE operated until October 18, 2007. And we'll give you a flight deck picture. 26 years ago this week, Sally Ride became the first American woman in space. Liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. On STS-7, Ride was a member of the first space shuttle mission with a five-person crew, deploying two communications satellites and conducting a number of experiments. Ride also flew on STS-41G in October of 1984. She left NASA in 1989 for other pursuits, including the development of science education programs for children. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.